build time too. But for me, I was just really able to kind of figure that out as I was yeah. going along. Yeah. What about your your diet? And since you because you mentioned health on this one, like was there is there was there a specific, particular type of of eating or meal plan that you would follow while you were training versus when you were actually competing, or is it just you know keep it consistent throughout? How did you approach uh, I guess nutrition that way? That's a really good question and a really hot topic that I think varies for a lot of people and a lot of people have opinions on. So I am not like, I don't have a degree in dietetics or anything along those lines. But for me, it was always about um, giving my body the best advantage it could. So eating more whole foods, um, good sources of protein, you know, eliminating bad fats. I personally have never jumped on you know, a keto diet or an Atkins diet or anything along those lines. Mm -hmm. um, I have taken a genetic test to figure out um, what foods that my body uh, digests well, or that will lead me to stay at a healthy weight versus gain a healthy weight. So that actually helped a lot. And it was funny because I didn't do that until I was uh, in my twenties and it kind of aligned well with how I thought my body operated mm -hmm. at well before. Mm -hmm. like, um, I know for a lot of elite skaters, like having a really good um, diet base is super important because you're training so many hours a day um, and you want to make sure that you're getting enough calcium, enough protein, you know, healthy fats are really good. So, I mean, whenever I kind of get that question or I've worked with other people, it's like, if you're having challenges with this, like seek a professional, that's why they're there. Yeah. Um, that's not myself, but balance, <laughs> it, balance is key. Yeah. The, so the genetic test you're talking about, um, what's the name of the company that you went to to get that done? Oh my gosh, that's a really good question. That was a while ago. Okay. I can't remember. Um, it's on the tip of my tongue. I know when we get off this, I'll, <laughs> we'll, uh, you know, pop right into my head, but off the top of my yeah. head, I can't. Okay. That's okay. If you, if you remember before I release this, then we'll, we'll put it in the show notes. So it, it may be a secret surprise for the listeners, um, right. which is great. Okay. So, okay. So in what you're doing career wise progressed to from physical therapy to what you're doing now, which is a uh, scrum master. So for the listeners who don't know what that means, <laughs> what, what is a scrum master and what made you want to stop being a physical therapist and try something else again? Oh, that's a really good question for sure. So, and, and one that's difficult to understand, to, to explain to people. So um, the word scrum comes from rugby. So a lot of people are familiar with that because I'm like, scrum, like, what the heck? What does that even mean? Um, but it's a kind of like a project management role where you seek to really optimize workflows and lead teams. And um, there's a framework for Scrum, which a lot of companies are adapting to because it allows you as the employee and the team, because I work with a, a team of people to produce working software to really grow the people on your team, to grow the organization, and then to actually save the company a lot of money and to produce a good end product really quickly so it's for the people that understand what project management is it's kind of like that but it's kind of not and the reason that I went into something different which is really funny because a lot of people I a lot of therapists specifically are like why would you ever want to do something other than physical therapy and then there's a whole other group of people that are like yes I want to be in a position that's not clinical because being a clinical physical therapist where you're treating patients day after day. It's a very demanding field. So those of you that go and see physical therapists, whether it's like you have a family member that sees them in the nursing home or the hospital or outpatient clinic, um, they do a lot of behind the scenes work and there's a lot of other demands. And I, you know, nurses and doctors, they do amazing, amazing work. Uh, and I think they get a little bit more credit than physical therapists do. Um, and, and rightly so, like I said, they do amazing things, but I think that the work that physical therapists do sometimes gets a little bit um, swept under the rug. Um, but I, I definitely love the profession, the career, and I still do a little bit um, of work at a hospital because mm -hmm. I, I definitely enjoy that patient population and I enjoy the diversity. Like I said, that's kind of how I describe myself as someone that enjoys really unique, really diverse experiences. 
And I was really feeling like a handful of years into my career, I kind of reached my peak. Like there really wasn't much other direction I could go. I could get a certification and invest a fair amount of time and money into doing that, but that would still kind of pigeonhole me into what I was doing. And I felt like I didn't have a lot of really um, ways to grow and move. And I felt kind of stuck in my career. Um, and I've, I've been really fortunate throughout my whole life, not only just in skating, but in other arenas to have really great coaches and, and mentors. And, and that's one thing that above, you know, all else I'm really, really thankful for because it's helped me in so many just different areas of life. And I had a couple friends that were working as like business analysts and scrum masters and just hearing like how that type of working environment was like how collaborative it was and getting to work with people and growing together and learning and stretching yourself and being okay being a little bit vulnerable with people that you work with to really serve the greater good just really fit my personality so hmm. I learned a little bit I thought a lot about it because if you go and get your doctorate and then kind of pivot and make a career change it's it can seem a little wonky a little unique but um <laughs> like, Hey, why, why not roll with it? I feel like I've been a little bit of an unconventional person, you know, my, my whole life, um, to a certain extent, but, um, yeah, took some certifications, um, started working on some projects and really enjoyed it. And that's kind of where I am today with, with that piece. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. So, uh, when you chat with your coworkers, do you ask that they refer to you as doctor? <laughs> you know, that's really funny. I, I don't. Um, a lot of people actually don't know that physical therapy is a doctorate. I know a lot of times if you go and see a chiropractor, they call themselves doctor so-and-so. Mm -hmm. For some reason that hasn't reached the physical therapy world. I mean, there are a lot of opinions on that. I don't really care, but um, sometimes people don't realize, or, like I've had older patients ask like, oh, do you have to go to school for this? And I'm like, yep, yeah, you know, I, I actually have a doctorate. <laughs> which is funny. I mean, that's okay. Yeah. I'm not, not one to really, you know, need to have a title or anything like that, but it's kind of, kind of humorous because there's a fair amount of education that goes, goes into getting that degree. Mm -hmm. Oh, that def <laughs> definitely is. I mean, you have a, a doctorate. That's uh that's not a, an easy a task. Um, so yeah. Okay. Well, okay. Good to know. Um, so one thing I'd like to follow up with is, is throughout your career, the idea of how you approach fear. So, I mean, obviously as a, as a figure, figure skater, there's the physical fear of, of falling when you're trying something new, but even then, you know, you have started in one career and then jumped to another career. There has to have been some kind of apprehension at some point of, you know, am I making the right career? Is this really what I want to do? So in instances in your life where you come across times when you're fearful, how do you approach those and how do you overcome that? That's a really good question. So, I mean, going back to my figure skating days, there's a ton of fear. I mean, learning a new jump when you go from a single to a double to a triple, that's like a whole different animal in and of itself. And you can definitely physically get hurt, like you said, but a lot of it comes down to your mental state and really controlling your thoughts and really being mentally strong and like knowing that it's going to be okay. Um, so yeah, step number one, there's been a lot of fear. I mean, you can do something perfect in practice a million times, but you put on that outfit, you do your hair, you do your makeup, you have your five minute warm up, warm up, they then call your name and it's like, the lights are on you. Like that is a big blank surface of ice and there's just you. Um, so you really have to take control of your thoughts and not let the negative negativity creep in. Um, I think that if there isn't something in life that you're afraid of, you're probably not stretching and growing enough. Mm -hmm. um, that doesn't have to mean, you know, just on the ice. I think that whether that's in your, you know, personal life, if that's a certain goal you're reaching for in your career, um, obviously taking calculated risks, but I mean, I, my, approach to fear is, you know, go for it. You'll figure it out. You know, make sure that you have someone to support you and that it's, that it's a calculated risk. If it's a really, really big one, you know, that could cost you financially, things like that. But yeah, kind of how I have, at least in the skating world. And then when I kind of transitioned careers, 
it was definitely scary. Um, and like I said, I thought about it. I didn't try not to overthink it, but I also marinated in it a lot. And like I said, I had really great people supporting me and guiding me through that process because I think if I would have, you know, completely switched and gone into something like, I don't know, being a musician or something that would have been a lot more fearful and taken a lot more time because I haven't developed that skill. So you said something interesting that I want to go back to um, that I think is particularly important, especially as we're recording this episode right now in 2020. And that is the idea of being mentally strong and knowing that it's going to be okay. So on your, in your figure skating world, being mentally tough, um, how did you develop mental toughness so that you could keep moving forward no matter what? That honestly was probably my biggest challenge. Um, I had always been pretty athletic as a kid. So being strong, you know, jumping high, working on the flexibility a little bit, that wasn't the biggest challenge, but it was controlling my thoughts and not falling into a negative spiral. Mm -hmm. um, because skating is a very unforgiving sport. I mean, you watch it on TV in the Olympics, they can zoom in on that camera to any part of you that they want from your facial expression to exactly where that blade hits the ice. And if it is more than a quarter, that is an under rotation and that's downgrade. And the whole world knows about it in an instant. Um, so yeah, where was I going with that? Um, so it's a very unforgiving sport. And what I've realized, like I've messed up a lot of times to get to that senior level for me took years and years. And, um, there are times I never thought I was going to do it. Um, there's one time I even fell just like skating backwards. I mean, it's ice, it's slippery, crazy things happen. Um, but you kind of have to have amnesia. Like that's mm -hmm. the one biggest thing my coach taught me when I was performing is don't get ahead of yourself, be present in the moment. That's all you can control. And then if you have a stake, have a, or make a mistake, have amnesia, forget about it there's still things left, even though that mistake happened. That's kind of one of the unique things about figure skating is that if you fall, you just can't redo that jump. Like you miss points on that. You just got to keep going on. Yeah. Um, that's, that's how the sport works. But um, yeah, knowing that it's like, it's all going to be okay. Um, you know, people that do what Olympics, they spend a lot of time um, in with counselors and meditating and things like that, which I think are really powerful just to bring yourself really centered and knowing where you are. I've done some of that as well. And it definitely makes a difference. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's thankfully it's becoming more popular in society. Um, yoga, meditation, things like that to really like calm yourself and center yourself, get to know yourself. But yeah. Are, my do you have any particular, let's say meditations or, mm -hmm. or practices um, like that, that you recommend or that you continually do even now? Yeah, so I started with a few apps. Um, there's a, an app called Budified that was recommended to me. I started with that because it was very different for me. Um, I had never meditated before. Um, visualization is also really huge. And it's really funny because I've noticed when I'm afraid of something, I will have in the past tended to visualize the negative. So if I'm going through my program and every skater's program is very well laid out, they know exactly what they're going to do, when they're going to do it, like on what beat of the music. And in a program, if I'm visualizing that and I visualize myself falling, like I have to stop over and train myself to not think negative about that, to start over at the beginning and to make it through that whole program with landing perfect jumps and perfect spins and everything being perfect because that's ultimately like what I want to create. I think the mind is really powerful and there's something to be said for what you think you do create. Um, so if you're afraid of falling, if you're afraid of, you know, getting fired or whatever, you're more likely to create that. Mm -hmm. When you were going up or rising the ranks in figure skating, did you have like a, a, a I want to say a performance coach, I guess, in this way, or was like that would focus with you separately on your mental strength and kind of getting you centered with that? Or or did your, um, I guess, your traditional coach 
cover a lot of these bases at the same time.